Uh, David, we're turning now to 2 Thessalonians, and it starts very much as did 1 Thessalonians with Paul, Silvanus, and mm -hmm. Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so it claims to be by Paul, right. but a number of people have doubted that uh, right. claim. What, what do you make of well, that? Well, uh, I, I would just say from the beginning that, that I'm perfectly happy to say that there's some letters that claim to be by Paul that aren't by Paul. I don't think Paul wrote Ephesians. I don't think Paul wrote... 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. So this is an interesting one for me because I think the evidence is not so clear, uh, though at the end of the day, I suspect this is written by somebody in Paul's name. Um, I can understand the debate more thoroughly. I think uh, the reasons that people have suspected that it may not be written by Paul, uh, as with so many arguments, can cut both ways. Uh, one is it follows so closely the kind of format of 1 Thessalonians that people have thought whoever wrote it actually had 1 Thessalonians um, in front of him or her. And it refers to 1 Thessalonians a couple of times. It refers to 1 Thessalonians a couple of times as a, as a letter that they've already received, as the tradition that they've become, and perhaps as a letter of their misunderstanding. So you have a feeling 1 Thessalonians has been there for a while. Uh, we'll talk in a couple of minutes about the kind of vision of the last days, which in some days seems not entirely congru congruent with, with what we get as a picture of the last days in 1 Thessalonians. Um, and there's a kind of, um, or maybe there's a very strong emphasis at the end where the author says, I'm Paul, I'm writing this in my own hand. And you can read that in two ways. You can either say, of course, that's indication that this is authentic Paul's autograph, or you can say that he protests too much. Uh, that this is this is the way of trying to insist that a letter that actually came from later or from another hand uh, yeah, is yeah. written by Paul himself. Particularly the wording, this is the mark in every letter of mine. Yeah, every letter of mine. Well, yeah. How many letters have there been, right? <laughs> yes, right. right. So far we know of one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly right. So uh, on the other hand, uh, Mr. Mallerby, who I read at great length for all this, wants to think that, that uh, this fits in, in a fairly short amount of time. People are misinterpreting First Thessalonians and that what he's trying to counter, he talks about a letter that suggests that, that, uh, the, that the second coming has already come, but that that's really a misinterpretation of the first Thessalonian letter and that Paul is insisting that he's interpreting his own letter uh, more effectively than he does. Uh, it, it becomes a kind of question of an intuitive reading. My intuitive reading is this sounds like a different voice that is faithful, trying to be faithful to Paul. It's not an anti paulinist but trying to apply it to a time later where there have been more Pauline letters, where the kingdom has been delayed even further, where persecutions have continued. What do you think? Um, well, I, I share your ambivalence yeah. about it. And I, I think in general, I come down on the side of, um, of uh, inauthenticity, yeah. that, uh, that there are a number of things that um, seem to be, they have a feel of being later. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about a little yeah. bit of that when we, um, uh, when we get into the nitty gritty of the uh, eschatology yeah. of the, yeah. the piece. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in terms of the language and stuff, yeah. it's very similar to, yeah, uh, very, to First Thessalonians, uh, unlike, let's say, Ephesians. No, yeah, right, right, or, or Second uh, Timothy, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and uh, the, the whole, in those other letters, um, the theological concerns, the church structures, they don't seem to be the kinds of things that we find represented all in Pauline true. letters. All true. Here, it's just this matter of eschatology yeah, yeah. and how close the fit is yeah. uh, between what's said here and what goes on in um, in uh, First Thessalonians. Uh, at the end of the day, I think the fit is uh, is bad, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it points to a later hand. But <laughs> it, another scenario that I've uh, entertained from time to time is that um, uh, Paul has written First Thessalonians, gets reports that it's being misinterpreted right. in one way or another, right. tells Timothy, send him a letter, will yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and set Timothy him straight. Timothy says, here's what Paul would say. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. So, uh, you know, it may, it could conceivably be uh, something written within Paul's circle yeah, yeah, yeah. by another one of his yeah. uh, team that he actually signs yeah, yeah, off yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, the way yeah, that yeah, he yeah. At the end. Is it not bad, Timothy? I'll yeah. sign this, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, good. Uh, it's indicative of how much we don't know, once again, about so much of the things that we, uh, that we study with, with care. All right, um, so let's come out. I would come out on the side of, of pseudonymity. I, I, just a kind of a quick theological reason. All right, so there it is. Uh, 
let's suppose you and I both decide, you as a Catholic and I as a Protestant, that there it is in the New Testament, but Paul didn't write it. Does it suddenly lose its authority? Do we no longer preach it? Do we no longer teach it? Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, this is one of the reasons that I go back to the, uh, the multiple uh, signatories on these yeah. letters. Um, yeah. That Paul was not, you know, uh, we sometimes have a, a romantic notion of Paul as uh, the, the unique apostle yeah. working on his own. No, he was always a member of a team. Yeah. Uh, and I think what we have in, in uh, the Pauline correspondence uh, overall is, is the expression of uh, Pauline Christianity, of a school. Yeah. And so uh, the church um, viewed it as something to, uh, to take inspiration from and, yeah. um, and finally incorporated it in a, a canon of authorized scripture. So that's where it sits yeah. for me, even if it wasn't, in fact, yeah. originally written by uh, Paul. Uh, I would say the same. Mm -hmm. so, and, and I'm perfectly happy to preach it without lengthy descriptions of where Paul was in his ministry when he wrote it. Right. Uh, that's where I hedge. So, so <laughs> let, let's turn then to okay. what he says, yeah. and uh, he begins as uh, usual with a thanksgiving yep. that kind of echoes the thanksgiving in uh, First Thessalonians, Very much right? Echoes it. Yeah, and talks about his boasting. Of yeah. the, so the, some yeah. of the same warm, fuzzy feeling, yeah. but uh, it, that ends very quickly. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. because the, what what strikes me is is the shift from. Um, es, and and these are inseparable in some ways. I know that, but kind of eschatological hope. Comfort one another with these words. Here's what you can hope for those of you who've died in the faith. Here's what you hope for those whom you love. To uh, here's how you can rejoice in the sufferings of those who are persecuting you. Now, now the eschaton becomes good news, not because of your redemption. First of all, it's not out of there, but not first of all, but from the fact that your enemies will at last uh, be destroyed in get the time it in of the neck. They'll get it in the neck. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. The, um, uh, the eschatological section begins in verse 5. This is evidence of the righteous yeah. judgment of yeah. God yeah. Uh, and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom. So talk a little bit more about uh, the distinctive features of this uh, eschatological scenario in chapter 1. Yeah, well, we have, uh, we have language that in some ways seems... Um, to be a familiar apocalyptic language, but the stress on flaming fire and inflicting vengeance, which is not divorced from other apocalyptic language, but quite different from what we have, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in First Thessalonians. And then um, the verse 9, those, those who oppose you will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. So that, so that the, the punishment is twofold, and I'm not sure whether this is two ways of saying the same thing eternal destruction on the one hand and total separation from God. Is that two ways of saying the same thing? Uh, in either case, it's, it, is, it is deeply and eternally damning, finally. Um, and I think that's different from the way in which Paul seems to hold out hope in First Thessalonians. Right. Uh, we talked a little bit in uh, thinking about First Thessalonians yeah. and uh, its relationship with other apo yeah. apocalyptic texts in the New Testament, um, especially in the second section in yeah. chapter 5, some of the affinities with uh, yeah. the gospel literature. Uh, but this text in particular, in Second uh, Thessalonians uh, 1, yeah. uh, reminds me an awful lot of Matthew. Yes. And uh, the emphasis on the weeping and gnashing yeah, of teeth. And, yep, yeah, 24th, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, separation. And separation, and separation. Yeah. right? Separation of the yeah. sheep and the goats yeah. and the yeah. condemnation to uh, eternal. eternal damnation. And you're you're yes. on your way, right? Eternal. So yeah. the, that note of, uh, that way of reading apocalyptic language is characteristic of the, at least that strand of yeah. Christianity. And, and, and that seems yeah. to be reflected here. It does seem to be reflected here and seems a little different and maybe even a little later. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that pushes me to see this yeah. text as... Yeah. as um, uh, as later a non-Pauline, yeah. the flavor is different. But, but yeah, on the again, other hand, I mean, maybe this is exactly what you're going to ask, so I'm going to say it anyway, and then you can ask it. Um, to this end, we always pray for you, so that the end of this, the end of the chapter we're dealing with now, chapter 1, is once again for the faithfulness, for the fidelity of the, uh, and loyalty of the Thessalonians. He, having done his business about damning the others, he now talks about the glory that's yet to come. Mm -hmm. and urges them to hold fast. And that is a kind of reaffirmation of the hope that goes with the faith and love he's been calling right. for. Well, uh, the, the text clearly uh, appropriates Pauline language. Yeah, very much e Even so. if they, uh, yeah. the structure of the eschatological yeah. um, belief seems to be a little off. Um, again, in verse 12, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. I mean, this, and, yeah. Does this re yeah. remind you of some other Pauline texts? Uh, the, the, the stress on glory, which we now receive and will receive in our fullness, the stress on grace, uh, which is the gift that we receive through Jesus Christ, is indicative of a lot of Paul's language.
Mm. And the name too. And Reminds the name. Me of the Philippians the name of too, Jesus, him, right? Every which name. is exalted every above every above. name. Yeah. Yeah. In heaven, on earth, yeah. and under the sounds, earth. It's, it, it, whoever, I think you're exactly right. Unlike Ephesians, um, this is this is somebody steeped in Pauline language, uh, and I think not simply um, not simply to be deceptive, but because it's the language with it, with which he thinks faith. And so he can he can be Pauline without being Paul, without cheating. Right. Uh, th this undercuts um, my somewhat facetious theory of uh, of Timothy or Silas being the uh, the author of the letter, because I think whoever is writing this uh, knows Paul as a literary. Uh, I think so. Has, has read the canon. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And is trying yeah. to imitate uh, yeah. a specific yeah. uh, point yeah. in the canon. Yeah. 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 I think that's probably right. Okay. So we have a lot of judgment here. A lot in, of judgment. Some this. hope. Yeah. Um, and then he gets ready to to uh, specify more fully uh, how we anticipate the coming once again. And we'll talk about and that. And we'll talk next about time. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir.